So in this short video, I want to uh, talk about codes and categories and themes. Uh, I know these terms uh, can be confusing, especially if they appear together. And, uh, and then if you look into published materials, books or, or articles based on research, then again, you'll find uh, authors using sometimes all of these terms, sometimes some of these terms, sometimes using them interchangeably. So all of this obviously adds to the confusion. And then sometimes your supervisors, again, may have a different idea from what you just read about. So, uh, so they may start asking you questions. For example, why are you not talking about categories and you're talking about themes? So, so of course, all of this can be extremely confusing. And this is why in this video, I will uh, first talk about uh, some definitions. I'll define and explain how these, uh, how these concepts differ. Uh, then I'll uh, talk about how I use these terms and suggest how you may use them as well. And then I'll confuse you a little bit more because I do have to talk about some alternative uses. So that again, you're not surprised when, for example, your supervisors uh, keep asking you about certain uh, terms and why you're not or why you're using them. So first let's talk about all of these three terms together. As I'll explain in a second, I do not use all of them. Uh, but let's first uh, define and understand all these terms. So basically, if you if you think about these terms from a bottom up approach, uh, it starts with a code, it starts with a code, which is uh, the most specific, the smallest, if you like element, the most specific, uh, the most, uh, the least inclusive, uh, and then it starts to go up. So then there is a category which is a little bit more inclusive and therefore a little bit more abstract sometimes and, and less specific because it may include several things rather than just be talking about one specific thing as uh, the codes do. And then moving up, you have uh, our themes which are the, uh, the most inclusive, uh, sometimes the most abstract, of these three. So, so you have codes, then you have moving up, you have uh, categories, and then you have themes. So in the ideal world, this of course would be very clear and hopefully you would straight away understand uh, these whole classifications and you would know how to use them. But of course we don't uh, live in an ideal world, so, so this can't be uh, that simple. Uh, firstly, yes, there are some uh, authors, some people who use all of these three terms. So you will in fact see if you're, let's say, if you're looking at some uh, findings and results, you will see all these terms being used together. And I've heard that recently uh, from one of my students uh, who, who has a supervisor uh, who encouraged her to use, uh, to talk about categories and themes and codes. Uh, so sometimes this does happen at the level, at the stage of talking about the findings. In which case, again, it's relatively straightforward, just like I explained. If you have your, your main theme, so let's say challenges that students, uh, that students face in um, online education, then underneath you would have uh, categories if you decide to categorize these challenges. So let's say personal challenges and, and institutional challenges. And then underneath you would list these challenges uh, in form of codes. So personal challenges would be, let's say, I don't know, financial challenges and and uh, some personal characteristics, and these would be codes. Then institutional challenges would be some kind of, um, I don't know, lack or shortage of teachers, and that would be also a code. So that's, again, ideal world. And as you can see, all of these three terms are being used. Uh, if it wasn't for that recent lesson with my one of my students, uh, where I found out about the term codes still being used at the level of findings, I would normally say that this is not how it works. But just because I, I've heard that and I started to read on uh, on this and I realized some people do use this terminology. So they still talk about codes when they describe their findings. However, so, so that's why I want to mention that. Uh, just in case if your, again, your supervisors, for example, stick to this classification. However, as I usually explain, codes normally do not make it to this stage, to the stage of uh, when you're talking about your findings. And this is because codes are just your analytic tools. So normally, uh, when you're organizing and sorting your data and working on your data, so generally all kinds of analysis, uh, obviously I won't be going into detail of that in this video, but I do have lots of videos in which I talk about coding and how codes become themes, for example. Uh, so usually at the stage of the analysis, when you're uh, 
you're trying to sort your data and you're using these little labels, uh, namely codes, that's where you are talking about codes. So as I often explain, these codes are little summaries of what's being said. They are very specific, just like I said in this video, they're quite descriptive. They usually relate just to one thing that you're seeing. So somebody's saying something and you're uh, selecting that extract, that piece of text, and you're naming that, creating a, a kind of a table of contents. So you're, you're listing, you're creating a list of codes, which later will help you uh, understand your data and eventually uh, arrive at some conclusions as to what your themes are. So, so general themes, topics discussed in your study. So as I explained uh, before in some of my videos and I believe some uh, blog articles, usually the way I explain the difference between a code and a theme is that code, uh, a code is more specific and less inclusive and less abstract. And also a code is something that only appears in at the stage of data analysis. So at the stage of data analysis, especially if you're using software, uh, a code is something that you're using in the software. The moment it leaves the software, the moment you have your final uh, structure, let's call it, uh, let's call, uh, call it uh, a coding framework. Uh, so the final framework, the final structure. So you read your data, you develop, develop your codes, categorize them into several things. So like I said, maybe challenges and benefits and and uh, any other and other things that you may. Uh, spot in your data. The moment this framework is ready, the moment it leaves the software and you start to describe it in your paper or dissertation, from now on we're talking about themes, not codes, because codes were just our tools that we are using in that ana uh, data analysis uh, process. And the comparison that I used uh, when I talked to that, that student during our private uh, session, uh, she liked that comparison, so I wrote it down and decided to use it. The comparison that I used is that uh, codes are, if you think about cooking, if you think, let's say, even about making pizza or any other dish, codes are your ingredients, your ingredients. Uh, the moment you take out the, the ready, uh, the final product, so you take out your pizza, for example, from the oven, it's a theme, it's a theme. Pizza is a theme, it's the final product with all these ingredients, but you don't necessarily talk about uh, your pizza in terms of uh, of yeast and, and sugar and salt, you're just talking about pizza being pizza. So just about your final product. And, and that's how I compare this to codes and themes. So again, codes are your ingredients. Codes are important when you're still working, you know, on that final product. So when you're trying to make your dough for pizza uh, to stick to that comparison or just working in your data analysis software and trying to sort your data, you're using codes. The moment you, you put all that th uh, thing together and uh, you're presenting that product, it's your uh, thematic framework, so no more talking about coding, just talking about themes. And now you may be wondering where are categories in all that. So uh, as I also explain very often when we talk about qualitative research and, and especially talk about confusing, uh, confusing uh, terminology, uh, usually this is about things like uh, world views and beliefs, sometimes methodologies, many things related to research really. I often say that it depends on the author, it depends on the terminology that you choose to follow. That's very important. So you read all these books and there are so many different uh, terms being thrown around. So uh, all this is confusing, but if you stick to one terminal, one set of terms and you are being consistent using these terms, that's what really matters. So. So the way I usually talk about these things, and, and this started when I was doing my uh, PhD and I realized I just like to follow this classification because it's just clear and as you know, I don't like to uh, you know make things complex. <laughs> Quite contrary, I try to keep them simple. I decided to uh, not to think about categories, uh, just to talk about themes and sub-themes. So these are the only terms you'll find in my findings. So the key, the top level, uh, the top level, uh, concept will be still a theme. So let's stick, uh, go back to our example of online education and challenges and, and benefits. Uh, benefits and challenges will be my themes. And then uh, this, you know, the, the thing that that goes next in the hierarchy. Uh, so this was our institutional, for example, challenges and personal challenges. I will talk about these as sub themes. So we have our themes, we have sub themes, and now you're probably thinking, what about the next level? So our uh, specific personal challenges. So let's say character, uh, one person's character, or you know, stress and anxiety, or 
anything else. So we want to list our personal challenges. How do you call these? And now you can uh, choose to call them sub sub themes, of course, and that makes sense. It's just like talking about sub sub sections in your uh, in your thesis or dissertation, or you can just keep using them. Uh, keep talking about sub themes. So that's in fact usually what I do. So I talk about uh, key themes and then I talk about sub themes and then whatever's even further down into that hierarchy, I still talk about sub themes. I just don't like the sound of sub sub themes and sub 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 themes. So same way as I don't normally talk about sub sub sections, but just about sections and then subsections. So that's uh, that's how I use these terms. So in this classification, there is no space for categories. I just don't use that term. Uh, some, again, some authors use them, some methodologies use them. So it is quite common in grounded theory, for example, to talk about categories. Uh, having said this, I have done and I've been involved in grounded theory studies and I've been, again, using the terms that I just presented. So only talking about themes and sub-themes. So that's it doesn't mean if you're doing a grounded theory study, you don't have to worry that you absolutely have to follow uh, these terms because they are just terms. As I said, what is more important, most important, in fact, is just being consistent in using uh, one set of terms, not to confuse yourself and uh, your readers. So this is it. I hope that this helps uh, helped you understand these uh, these terms and understand perhaps why people use them in so many ways and why why you're confused and maybe why your supervisors use different terms uh, from what you read about uh, just remember to be again to be consistent just remember to stick to one set of terms be ready to to d defend that decision so even if you're uh, discussing this you know this uh, discrepancy between your and your supervisor's terms, just be ready to, to discuss this and explain why you're using these terms. So, so it doesn't mean that either you or the supervisors don't know something or are you know, not less knowledgeable. It may simply mean that you are using different sets of terms to describe the same things. I hope that you learned something from this video. If you did, please like the video to help others find it on YouTube. And remember that if you want to discuss your findings, if you want to discuss your study with me, uh, feel free to explore my website where I list all kinds of uh, services I provide, including uh, private Zoom tutorials.